Hi everyone, Ellie Jacobson here for Advanced Advantage Play. I was thinking of doing a video where I just do a mind dump on every single way I could think of beating a casino, no matter the game or the method or whatever it is, just every legal method. And as I started to write that out, I realized, wow, there are a lot of ways to beat the house. So what I decided to do is simply refocus on to blackjack and uh, write down some of the ways of beating blackjack. Um, so let's just get right to that. So I'm going to present 15 ways to legally beat blackjack. I think I've done a video like this before, but hopefully this one has uh, a little bit of new content and maybe it's just a little bit more fresh as well. All right, so let's get going. Well, the first thing I need to talk with you about are just the basics of winning. What does it mean to beat the house? Well, the one thing you need in order to be a winning player is information. Any winning method requires information that allows you to get a mathematical edge over the house. And if you for some reason come across information, and uh, I've done other videos where I talk about what information is, but if you come across information in the course of playing any game in a casino, it's always worthwhile thinking, can I use this to get an edge? Well, sometimes yes, and sometimes no, but if the answer is yes, are you willing to do the hard work? to be a winner with that information. That may require scouting out opportunities, traveling, um, learning complicated strategies, uh, getting a team together, whatever it requires. You know, are you willing to do that work? So this is what's required to be a winner. So now let's talk about winning at blackjack. And for each of these, I want to talk a little bit about the information that accompanies the particular uh, method that I put up here. So first of all, card counting, and this is familiar to everyone, um, hopefully, but let's just talk about what ordinary blackjack card counting is in terms of information. Well, an unshuffled uh, deck of cards, we don't have any particular information about the density of high cards versus low cards, but as cards are dealt from the deck or from the shoe, however the game is being dealt, the density of high cards to low cards changes. And what card counting allows you to do is to actually keep track of the relative densities of these two groups of cards, 10 Jack, Queen, King, Ace versus two, three, four, five, six for the high-low card counting system. And it's this sort of changing density of these two groups that allows you to get an edge. So that is information. That's what I mean by information. Well, we can also card count blackjack variants, and you may know games like Spanish 20, 21 or Blackjack Switch. So all of these games, if they're dealt from a shoe or uh, dealt multiple rounds between shuffles, are vulnerable to card counting. Now again, part of winning is not just knowing that they're vulnerable, but is that information enough to beat the game? In some cases, yes, and in some, no. Um, card counting side bets. In this case, we have different groups of cards that are important. And so I've done a lot of work on card counting side bets, and it's in my book and on, on some of these videos and uh, in my blog. So, you know, card counting side bets is always taking advantage, again, of the relative density of certain cards in the shoe and keeping track of that density. And that's the information. Whole carding, of course, what whole carding refers to is seeing the dealer's whole card or down card, a card you aren't meant to see. That's clearly information. Edge sorting, and edge sorting is finding a game that's being used with a deck of cards that has an asymmetry along the two edges and then using that asymmetry so that during the game, certain cards are rotated in one direction, certain are rotated in another direction, often with the help of a team. And what you wanna do is to sort the cards again, so essentially you can recognize high cards versus low cards just by the design on the back prior to the cards being dealt. And that is clearly information. There's been a lot of talk about whether edge sorting is legal. I don't know any cases where it's been ruled illegal in the sense that somebody's been put in jail or criminally charged, but certainly it has uh, failed in some uh, cases just on civil charges. 
some more winning methods shuffle tracking this is where you actually follow a slug of cards through a shuffle so you know where some high cards are in the shoe and when those would be dealt out clearly that is information ace location being able to track an ace through a shuffle to know approximately when that ace is going to come out that is clearly information skilled cutting what this has to do with suppose you have an ace here right and what you're offered the cut well you would simply cut in a way that when those cards are brought to the top you now know that that ace is say the 26 card because you're a skilled cutter and it doesn't matter what the bottom card is you can always cut that to a known location and you can take advantage of knowing where one card is based on that clearly information split for less this is a rule that allows um, it is available only in some jurisdictions uh, in California for example in parts of Asia where you're allowed to actually um, if if you back bet on a player in other words you're allowed to bet behind a player if that player splits you only have to ride your bet on one of the two split hands and so you take advantage of a rule that gives you an opportunity that is not normally afforded a blackjack player where you don't have to match your split on the second hand so you're using this information you have about the this rule change to your advantage incidental marks on cards well if a deck of cards is uh, gets a mark for whatever reason on it provided you don't put that mark there you can use that so some more winning methods let's keep going here exposed cards well this is often the case that a dealer may just sort of be um, before they deal the next card if you're sitting at the right location at the table you may just see that top card before it's being dealt they might be a fidgety dealer right so just exposed cards in a hand dealt game is a source of information shuffle machines there have been some shuffle machines that have been reverse engineered um, the whether it is the actual mechanics of how it shuffles the cards and that may be defective or whether it's the random number generator itself that's supposed to randomly move cards to new locations is not quite um, good enough right so it also might be that the shuffle machine has some defect in it some sound it makes that allows you to track cards it may be that the shuffle machine um, doesn't shuffle often enough internally so that you can actually use a method like card counting even against a shuffle machine so there are all sorts of possible ways you can exploit shuffle machines promotional rule changes these are things like two to one on blackjacks or special um, other rules that, that are out there there was a three to one I'll show you a couple of these later on comps coupons and marketing so here you're taking advantage of your knowledge about essentially how much the casino will reinvest in you as a player in order to beat the game so you might not beating the be beating the game itself outright but if you play with a certain skill level against the game that exists and you also combine that with the comps and other uh, what other things the casino is giving you then you may be able to generate an edge and last let me just talk about loss rebates we know that a loss rebate is a sort of marketing tool that allow that's only given to certain very high limit players so that if they reach a loss threshold then they will get a certain percentage of their loss returned to them and this has been exploited by uh, famously by Don Johnson but also it's um, available still to this day in casinos throughout the US I don't know internationally and um, is again if you understand the method of beating this then knowing that you're going to have this rebate is information right that you can use to beat the game so all right let's just talk a little bit about what's out there first of all here are some books on blackjack and when you think about like all of these different methods of beating casino games and almost everybody says well I want to be a blackjack card counter the thing to know is that everybody starts out wanting to be a blackjack card counter that is the first step for advantage play well the casinos know that as well and so it is 
not only extremely difficult to do this in practice, it turns out to not be nearly as profitable as other methods. And I have some videos that you might want to watch. Go to my channel and do a little search on Blackjack where I talk about uh, the troubles that, that card counting can cause. Well, there are some good books out there if you really want to invest. Uh, I would recommend these um, books right here. The problem is most of them are, are very hard to get. So Forte's um, Casino Game Protection, if you could get a copy, great for you. Advantage Player for the Casino Executive by Bill Zender. Um, so any rate, this book in the middle, you know, Beyond Counting or Beyond Counting Exhibit CAA are uh, both great books, um, quite cost prohibitive. You would need to go to eBay and be willing to spend hundreds or possibly thousands of dollars to get a copy. And my own book down there in the corner, I hope you'll grab a copy of this one. Uh, it is um, $17.77 today on Amazon, and it has a lot on uh, specialty card counting blackjack side bets in it. All right, so here's just a couple of examples of um, ways that casinos have offered opportunities, they've offered information that have allowed players to get a huge edge. The first is this um, sort of promotion that happened at Klondike Casino. It doesn't even exist anymore. It's called the free ride promotion. And what it was is that if a player was dealt to blackjack, then he was given a token he could uh, redeem for a push on any hand he wanted. So uh, you can understand how that led to a player edge right off the top. Then here is a promotion that happened at Mohegan Sun, and you see triple down blackjack. Um, so yes, that's right. Rather than double down, you could triple down. And this allowed, this was a um, promotional rule change that gave the player the edge. And of course, this is a famous instance of a player who negotiated a loss rebate and made millions of dollars, again, exploiting marketing. So also, you know, card counting blackjack variants. There are a lot of these variants out there. And the ones I have here in red are ones that I know for certain because of just experiences I've had and people I know that have been beaten by card counting. So two more books out there. There is exactly one book I'm aware of on card counting Spanish 21 or any blackjack variant other than ordinary blackjack. And there's also a book out there on predicting aces. It's, it, it's not the greatest book, but it certainly at least gives you the ideas of how to beat the game um, by tracking aces. All right, so now I just want to do a couple of minutes on losing um, losing 101, all right? So we had winning 101, here is losing 101. Any method that doesn't rely on information is a losing method. So that's a really important point, right? If you think that you're winning and the you cannot point to specific tangible physical information not some voodoo thing you think you know, right? But actual tangible, you know, like this is information. I am pointing to the information right here. If you don't have that, it's a losing method. Um, most people, most gamblers have um, beliefs that are just wrong, right? They, they operate as losers. And this is how casinos make their money because they rely on players having beliefs that are not backed up by information. So they're wrong and they're losing. And so I just wanna talk about a couple of losing blackjack beliefs. And I actually cover these at length in my book. Now this book was originally, I think 29.95 when it came out in 2005. This is my very first book. I really like this book. It is a book on blackjack that assumes that you want to take the next step, right? You are somebody who's played a lot in a casino, um, but you want to um, learn a little more, but you don't 
like these really technical books that go into great mathematical details. So this is an intermediate book, a transition book between sort of recreational play and advanced play. Um, and I have a long section in here on voodoo beliefs in blackjack. So here are just a couple win loss limits. So this, these are people who say, look, I'm going to play till I either win $100 or lose $100, then I'm going to leave, right? If I win $100, great, I will bank the win and I can walk away a winner. Um, losing $100, well, at least I will keep my downside. And people think that by booking a win, right? They try and book a win. If I could just book a win, then that'll make me a winner. As if the cards forget, you know, that, that you were there the next day when you come in. They say, oh, you know, Fred, you weren't, I haven't seen you in a day. I can let you win again. Whereas if you stayed and played more that same day, the cards would somehow say, hey, Fred, um, you're still here. I have to make you lose now, right? So you can see there is no information in having win-loss limits. Progressions, um, whether it's a martingale doubling your bet after a loss or any one of a dozen other progression systems that are out there, those don't rely on information. Having a betting pattern is not the same as having tangible information about what the cards are, the density of cards, or seeing a card, or identifying a card, knowing something about marketing, right? Progressions have nothing to do with information and therefore are losing. Likewise, timing methods, right? Again, this is sort of like win-loss methods. Timing methods are sort of like I will play um, for so long today and as soon as I kind of have the feeling that I've won, I'm going to leave for the day, I'll come back tomorrow. Uh, timing methods are not relying on information. Hot, cold, dealers and tables, you might think that that's information. But again, what happened in the past on a table has nothing to do with what's going to happen in the future. You know, it's a very human sort of emotion to think that if a dealer, you see a dealer uh, win a bunch of hands in a row, they will be continuing on in that fashion at that table. But that's simply not true. You don't um, know anything about the future. And this, this um, divide between past and future is one that's often confusing for gamblers. But nothing about what's happened in the past, whether a table has players that have been winning or a table has players that have been losing, has anything to do with what's going to happen in the future. It's not information. And then just a whole host of voodoo-specific uh, beliefs for blackjack, right? So, for example, a face always follows a face, or a deuce is a dealer's ace, or third base controls um, the action, or it's a team game you have to play in a certain way, um, and if other players violate that, it's going to affect your bottom line. None of that is information. So if you think those sorts of things, any of these things that I put up here, then you have beliefs that are not based on information and are therefore losing beliefs. So, okay guys, here's the bottom line. Do be a winner. So if you're gonna play in a casino, only play with those opportunities where you have information and you know how to use it to give yourself an edge. Don't be a loser. Well, unless you want to be, all right? A lot of people view uh, gambling as simply a recreational activity. So if you want to be a loser, please go ahead and be a loser. Don't, tell me, don't let me tell you not to be a loser. But here's the real bottom line. If you don't want to be a loser, then don't be a loser, all right? That's what I'm really trying to say there. So, okay, everyone. Uh, that's about everything I wanted to say today. So uh, have a great day. It's Elliot Jacobson. See you later.